Using a cloud service to move files from one computer to another, or even to share files with a collaborator, you could finish a live project with someone who's in a completely different place in the world is a really, really useful thing. But I've found throughout the years, if you don't follow a couple best practices, you're going to run into issues. And so in this video, I wanna share a couple tips and tricks that if you follow these and implement these, no matter whether you're collaborating with someone else or just simply trying to move files from your studio computer to your stage computer, uh, they're always going to work. So let's dive in. Now, in this scenario, I've got a live set open up. Uh, this is a live set that I've, I've built, and I just want to move this from my studio computer to my stage computer. Uh, but before I do that, um, I want to point out, here's my live project, okay? So full set project. Within this, I've got multiple live sets. Now, this is something that I typically do not suggest because uh, a couple of reasons. One, you're going to end up with a bloated file management system to where all your songs are going to be in one Ableton Live project. Uh, it's going to take up a lot of space on your computer. And it's going to be difficult to share. But the other reason is if you're working with a collaborator and they see all these different live sets within one live project, they're not going to necessarily know which one to use. In fact, for me, opening this up on my stage computer, if I'm in a high pressure environment, I'm stressed, I'm maybe a little panicked, and I just look at this list. I may not immediately know what to open. So I want to make this simple on either me or the person I'm working with. So in this scenario, what I would suggest doing, get your project folder that you're ready to share, uh, ready, go to file, do save live set as, go over to your desktop and I'm going to rename this. We'll call this March set and I'm going to hit save. Okay. So at that point, I've got one individual live project uh, that uh, has a one single live set in it. Now let's go over to our desktop here. Let's look at this March set. Uh, March set ALS. Now, typically at this point, a lot of people stop and they go to send this file and they send this live project, or maybe they even send just this individual live set and they're going to run into issues if they do that. And the reason is in this live project, I've got tons of different samples and files that I'm referencing in this one file. So in order to make sure I have all of my samples at the same time, I'm going to go up to file here and I'm going to do collect all and save and hit okay. And what that's going to do is it's going to go throughout my computer and find files that are either on my uh, document folder in my desktop, um, or maybe even on an external hard drive like this, grab all of those and bring them into my project folder. So now let's go back to our project folder on our desktop here and we'll see March set project. Uh, and you see now we have a samples folder. I have this multi-tracks folder, which contain content. Those are now all brought into this single live project. So we're almost there. Now, when people go to share their live set, a lot of times they make this mistake. They go and share just this March set .ALS and they go, hey, Will, you told me to collect all and save. I collected all and saved. I shared my live set and I still had issues. You don't want to share your live set. You want to make sure that you share your live, share your live set project. That's a hard one to say. And when you share that project folder, it's going to have all the contents listed within it. But I would go even a step further to ensure that this works. Right click, and I'll show you how to do this on a Mac. I'm going to right click here and do compress March set project. And what that's going to do is that's going to turn that into a zipped file. It's going to take all the individual components uh, that are in that project folder, and it's going to put them into one compressed zipped file. Now, if you're on a Windows PC, uh, if you've ever compressed a file before and made a zip file, then just follow the process that you did there. Same exact thing uh, to use with Ableton Live. Here's the reason why we're going to do that. I found with certain cloud services, uh, Google Drive in particular, it seems to be the one that just that tends to be um, uh, really bad about this. I've had some issues with Dropbox doing a similar thing, where if I go and upload a live project folder without compressing it, without creating a zipped version of that, I upload that to my browser uh, and I share the link with someone and they go and say, hey, you know, go here, go grab the, the link and they click to download it. Uh, a lot of times they get taken to a page that just has a bunch of kind of information and they're unsure, do I download this file or that file? Uh, and it makes sense. When I upload the folder, I have access to those individual components, those individual parts, right? Uh, and if you just see that in a browser, you could end up downloading your live set, but not getting all your samples. It's just not a great way to work. So what I found, if you uh, compress your files, uh, zip your files on your computer, then what you're going to end up with is you're going to end up with a, a, a file on your computer where everything's together. It's all in one place. And then you can go and take uh, that compressed file 
and upload that to the cloud, to Dropbox, right? Uh, and then from there, share that link when the, the person you're collaborating with or either you just going from the studio to the stage, you open your file on your computer, uh, you're gonna have access to all the content you need. Now, one final note that I wanna share, particularly for those of you that are working um, uh, and collaborating on songs with someone and working and using plugins. So in this scenario, I'm gonna go to my plugins list here. Uh, let's grab an audio unit. Let's use Reason. We'll just drop this into my live set here. Now, let's say I've gone in and I've recorded a part uh, and it's, man, it's just a really great part. Uh, I use the the Kong uh, drum kit here. I recorded my part. I've got my sound loaded in uh, and everything's good to go. Everything sounds great. Uh, I follow the steps that, you, that I showed before. I saved my live file. Um, everything's looking good. And I go and send that to my collaborator. Well, when they go to open the live project, uh, they don't have reason. And so two things happen for them. One, um, they can't listen to what I just recorded. And that may be really crucial. For instance, if I, you know, uh, uh, recorded a drum part in Reason like this and sent it to them to record bass on top of, if they don't hear the drums, it's going to be difficult for them to record to. They can record to click, yes, but uh, they want to be able to record to drums to get the right vibe and feel going. The other thing, they're going to get a message that says, hey, you don't have this plugin um, and that's not a great way to work. So here's what I would suggest if you're working with plugins, working with collaborators, particularly if you're unsure if they have the same exact plugins as you, is when you have a project with a plugin, um, instead of recording from, uh, taking it from MIDI uh, and rendering it to audio and kind of being stuck where you are, right click on that file and do freeze track. And what freeze track does is it's going to essentially almost render a piece of audio in place. And then when you go and share that with your collaborator, when they open it up, they're gonna be able to hear the audio file that you recorded uh, and record on top of that. So they don't have to worry about not having the plugin. They'll still be able to hear your audio and they'll still be able to finish the project and send it back to you. And then when you get it back, all you've gotta do is right click and do unfreeze track. So that's a couple tips and tricks when you're sharing Ableton Live files using the cloud, whether collaborating with someone else or just simply moving from one computer to the next, that are gonna allow you to have success and always be able to open your live file and get, and get access to everything. Now, if you use Ableton Live on stage to perform, then head to fromstudiotostage.com slash free. I've got a bunch of free resources like my free tracks template, uh, free guide cues, click tracks, LTC files, mini cues for ProPresenter 7 that you could download completely for free. And it's gonna help you go for further faster and help you use Ableton Live in a way that's efficient, flexible, uh, and is very, very stable. So make sure you head there to download those free resources. And if you enjoy content like this, I post a new video every single day, 10 a.m. Central here on YouTube. Uh, make sure you subscribe and then hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And that's really great because you'll get a notification on your phone or computer, wherever you're watching on YouTube. YouTube. Um, and it's going to tell you what the title of the video is. And if it makes sense and you're interested, click through. If not, skip it. Wait for the next one that's going to come out the next day. But I would love to have you join me every day, 10 a.m. Central. So make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Thanks so much for watching this video. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.